DIYs by Dar, Coffee and Tea Challenge. This challenge is being hosted by Lel from Made by Marley and Levon from La Vintage Decor. And this challenge is the Maximalist Challenge. So look in the description and I will leave the playlist so you can take a look at all the other talented artists that are going to participate in this one. This should really be fun. Here is my piece. It is a 1980s part of an entertainment setter and it is a oak veneered solid piece of wood and I needed to take that uh, front off because um, it had one missing side already and the other piece didn't match up with it. So it came off pretty tough. I was surprised at how uh, difficult it was to remove. But they did have them glued as well. So when I took the other side off, I ended up with a big uh, tear on the veneer. So the MDF was kind of showing through and I had to take and I had to repair that. This was the backboard. I took that off and it also uh, needed a couple repairs on it. There were some tears and a couple holes. So I was going to take that in the house so I could work on it and get it ready to paint. Took the door off and also took uh, the handle off. I had a special handle I was going to put on here. There's that lovely spot. So I went ahead and I got the surf prep sander out and 220, I went ahead and sanded everything down and gave it a scuff sand and get this spot ready so I could put some of my uh, Gorilla Wood product in there. Uh, first though, I did paint it with a little bit of Bullseye Zinzer uh, um, water-based sealer so then I could get that gorilla wood putty to uh, stay in that spot. I went ahead and repaired the spots on that back panel and I primed that as well with the same zinzer. I needed two wooden shelves. There were glass ones in there and that was not going to work. So I got a nice thick piece of wood and cut myself out two shelves. And they fit perfectly. Wow, maybe it's going to be a good day. Or not. Uh, I had a little bit of a lift on some of the um, veneer, so I had to repair that. Uh, I went ahead and primed those wood shelves with that same zinzer. Gave it just one nice good coat all the way around. Oh, look at this beautiful paper. This is made by Lel from Made by Marley. Um, you just can't find paper like this. They suggest that you tear it so the glue will stick in the fibers. I found it easiest to use my fingernail and kind of push down and kind of rip it along where I wanted it. Or the other method that I used was just doing tiny little pinches and tear the paper off um, around the item. This was what I was thinking, how I wanted to lay it out. It left me a big space for lots of stenciling and lots of stamping. I did want to put a little color other than just the white, so I took some Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint in the color Mud Puddle, and all I did was put one coat on here. And all I did was put one coat all around on my shelves as well. Uh, since this was kind of rustic, I didn't really care if some of it shows through. There's my puppers. Uh, she wants to see if I have food. No food. See you later. Mod Podge. Mod Podge. And a brush. And put a nice even layer. I would say moderate layer.
here we go. Somehow when I'm doing this, I, I always hear this voice saying, put it down there and leave it alone. I didn't leave it alone. You can see I'm rubbing it and moving it around and trying to get the wrinkles out. And then I got worse and used the paste and started putting paste all over it. This was my first piece, my first piece of decoupage paper ever. And I did learn a lot on this uh, piece. So I have lots of good and new skills for the next time. The um, little borders went on very lovely. Ooh, looking kind of ugly. So I need to take some paints and I took the colors that I saw in the paper and I was trying to just blend it outward and trying to mix the colors together so it gave it a little more cohesiveness. Uh, it was quite a challenge with this paper. There were so many different colors in it. But this is what I came up with. And then you can see that big light blue circle there. I've got a big uh, pink flower I'm going to stencil in there. So I'm starting to stencil. And I did a lot of borders. And the other thing I did, you can see, I took a palette knife. And I took some of the color mud and a darker blue. And I just made some streaks going, going down just just to give it a little more interest and a little more fun. I'm going to do some stamping. Now, if you have new stamps, you need to take some 220 sandpaper and brush it in both directions to give it some tooth so it'll hold on to the paint and get any nubs or anything that are on there off. The stamps that I used are from Redesign by Prima and they are elemental borders and tribal pattern and you can use um, paint on these you can use stays on ink on these um, here is a big one and I did opt to use a brayer on here to make sure I got a nice crisp design and when I am done with the stamp um, if I'm going to use it a couple times, I might not wash it in between. But as soon as I'm done with them, I do wash them out. So here's where we're at with some of the pattern. There is my pink uh, stencil, and it looks pretty bare around it. So I think I'm going to have to add a little bit something more. And I had these sectioned off where I knew that the shelves were going to hit. Like this part was going to be in the bottom. Then the first shelf, the, the pink flower was going to be in there. And then the other two sections were going to be in the other portions of the shelf. This is what it looked like when I finished. I had to add some more red stamping in there. And it really um, looked nice, I thought. Now I have the door, which has also been cleaned and scuff sanded. I am adding the Mod Podge on that door. And... Knowing what I know now, I would have cleaned all that excess glue that I have run down along the sides. Um, yeah, it's good to get some glue on the edge, but when you leave a lot of the glue on there like that and you put your paper on, it just makes that paper removal so much harder. And I only ripped the top half because I knew I was going to be sanding the other edges to uh, rip the paper off and I could always run some Mod Podge along the edge. It did go a lot easier for me. I tried to put it there and just leave it alone. But man, that's really, really hard thing to do. <laughs> there was the outer border uh, that I added and here comes the removal of the excess. I crimped it down and used my nail to really um, fine line it. And then I took a 300 grit sandpaper on a 45 degree angle as I pushed the sanding tool away from me. It would come off really lovely if it didn't have all that other glue that was underneath there, which just made it so much harder. 
but this is what I ended up with. It looks pretty good. Now I have to try to take some paint and get this transition in between these two designs to flow a bit better. So I just used the same colors and tried to match them up the best that I could and just tapping a little bit of paint in on the edge just to make sure it's sealed down well and it came out pretty good. I was pretty pleased with it and just around the outer edge I just went blue. Now the inside stays on. I used a teal blue and I used the same uh, design by Prima stamp and stamp your um, stamp and always keep one hand on it because when these stamps are new they're sticky so when you go to pick up your hand the, the stamp will raise and then your pattern will get all off. I went ahead and I did the whole inside of that cabinet and while that was drying I came in and I added three coats of polycrylic matte finish on the back and on the door and reapplied the door. I was ready for the next process which was going to be making some molds. So um, I, I like making molds because I am a potter and I love playing with clay. So take your mold and add some starch into it. You don't need a lot and some DOS clay and you are going to put that in your mold and try to squeeze it down in there and get it as level as you can on the back. So when you go to remove it, let it fall out on its own with just a little bit of prompting because you don't want to distort your, your piece. Quick and thick glue. Here we go. They always said make sure you put a lot and put it all the way up to the edges. So I was putting on a lot and putting it all the way up to the ed edges. In a barn that was hmm, probably 120 degrees. Now here went the first piece. And mind you, it says good for vertical sticking. There's the second piece. I want you to slowly watch as I was oblivious to my piece sliding off. Minnie Mouse is going to show up here pretty soon to uh, give me some encouragement. Well, I had to move this. I, I had to get it horizontal. So this really safe looking setup, you know, well, you got to do what you got to do when you're by yourself. So I tried to get it more horizontal and started again, adding on my detail. And this is clay. It's going to shrink. So I took a potter's tool and I did try to butt these up as close as I could and try to put a little pressure on them. They still separated a bit. I needed to get the rest painted. I, I didn't have enough of the mud puddle paint, so I kind of mixed this color up a little bit of a gray green, maybe I would call it, but I wanted it more like a muted color so it would go with the inside, which it did. I had a little bit of mud puddle left and I just was going and brushing the detail um, areas on my moldings that I made. Then I went back with some holy guacamole, dry brushed it, the green, and painted the flowers. I added the blue at the top and now it's ready for a different stamp. And this one is from IOD and it is just crackle. And uh, when I was doing this, I turned it different directions because if you just keep doing it straight like that, then it's going to look weird. So I turned it, maybe went a little bit harder in areas, maybe a little bit lighter in areas. And what I ended up with was this, which I wanted that center area pretty much clean. All right stenciling. 
drop cloth from Dixie Bell. I am going to add about three quarters cup of sea spray because I want a pretty thick paste. Stencil spray. I, I can't stencil freehand. I just need to have it sticking on there. I don't know. Maybe I'll get more used to it. Now with that spatula, um, I, I kind of go in the direction of what the letter is and just almost go flat or straight on is the easiest for me. You just have to try it. Pretty good. I liked it. I might have to touch up a little bit on it. Um, now I have my tea cups, coffee cups, and I went ahead and the outside edge um, creamy white and I started adding different colors in. They've, they could be Dixie Belle or they could be an acrylic. They could have white mixed in them. I just was mixing up any kind of random colors that I liked. And there we have teacups. Now, the next thing's gonna be a coffee pot. And it's gonna be a disaster because I use different spray. Here we go. Oh, shit. Well, I had to clean all that mess up. It wasn't fun. Now I'm ready to stamp, and I have different stamps this time. These are all IOD stamps, or Iron Orchid Design Stamps. Um, I like them a lot, and I'm just using the Stays On ink, and uh, that color is black, and I am giving myself some paint by number uh, designs to follow because I am going to go back and I am going to hand paint on the inside of these flowers to really give it some maximum kick here. I wanted these flowers to look like they were pouring out of the kettles. At this point, I'm ready to kind of flip that design so we're looking straight on at them and just put a, a couple larger flowers right about in the middle and then taper that back down to just a few individual ones on the bottom. And if I had some spots that looked a little funny or missing, then I just added a little bit of a greenery in the way of a leaf. Now it's going to get fun. Now you can paint in the lines. And I use some Dixie Belle paints mixed with some acrylics to either lighten them up or darken them up. And you can even, at this point, if you want to, I'm adding like a highlight there. A highlight is something that's maybe closer to you or more on the surface. Because we're going to go back in and stamp these again. And when we stamp them again, we're going to add the black back in for a low light. So it just, it just works really cool and it's really neat. So as I was painting all these flowers, the bees were out. And I'm telling you, when I got to the really big, bright red ones, I had so many bees flying in the little barn because I had the doors open because it was really hot. It was crazy. Um, I was trying to get some of them um, on video, but I was a little afraid to move, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't grab the camera. Then 
there you can see I added some highlights where I knew I made it a little bit lighter where that leaf was going to curl. And we're going to go ahead and I'm getting all my stamps ready again. And I washed them in between this time because of course I had a paint. You really need to get them lined up or you're going to get like a double exposure of that black and it's not the end of the world because it's gonna happen and you just have to go back with some paint like right there you can see my double double image um, you just have to go back with the paint and repair it with some paint and a lot of the times just you know if you take your time and you line it up then you can get a perfect one like that that's what you're hoping for best case scenario Putting our low lights back in, it just gives that uh, a whole nother degree of pop to it. Someone's got to fix it. Remember this old girl, what we started with? Wow, she's probably really happy now because here she is.
So I am by my next piece that I am working on. But if you have stayed with me this long, I'm going to tell you about the entry into this little contest I have. I am going to give away one set of the Redesigned by Prima Elemental Border Stamps. Another Redesigned by Prima set of stamps called Italian Borders. But to me, it almost looks like a um, Greek key design. And then a package of really neat stencils. I think there's eight different designs in there. So what you have to do is you have to like, subscribe, and make a comment, of course, so um, your name can be entered into the contest. And I'll let you guys... I probably will wait maybe two weeks um, before I will actually be able to uh, pick somebody so I have enough of a group of people to pick from. And I just want to say that this piece was so much fun. I am so glad that I have been introduced to this way of painting furniture. Um, it brings all the elements together for me. I get pottery, I get painting, and I get to create a piece of furniture that was going to go into the dumpster. So, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next one.